Sarah, if you're not new, hey, what's up, homie? How's it hanging? So in today's video, as you can tell by the title, I will be talking about 10 things you should know before going vegetarian. I have been a vegetarian for two years, and I've learned a bunch of stuff along the way that I just thought I would share with you. So I made some notes on my phone that I think we should go over together. The very first thing is the different kinds of vegetarianism. You may be surprised you're like different types of vegetarian. There are specific different titles within the vegetarian genre. For example, I am an ovo-lacto vegetarian, which means I still consume dairy and eggs, hint ovo-lacto. Some vegetarians don't eat eggs, and so they'd be lacto-vegetarians. So I didn't know those were a thing until I went on a cruise and they asked what kind of vegetarian I was. And I was like, I don't know. And we looked at the options and we found that ovo-lacto, you eat eggs and dairy. So Figuring out what kind of vegetarian you are isn't super important, but to just realize that there are different kinds, like different categories of vegetarian is something good to know. Number two, you're gonna be quizzed a lot about it. When you tell them for the first time that you're vegetarian, they're gonna ask you a lot of questions. Some good, some bad, so don't be freaked out, but they'll ask you why you're vegetarian, what made you wanna go vegetarian. I've had people ask me, how do you not eat meat? I could never. You never crave bacon? You know, stuff like that. Or they may ask you, are you getting enough protein? Are you sure? I don't think you are. And they'll start giving you questions like that. Or they may say, oh, you're high, that's kind of high maintenance, don't you think? I've had someone do that to me before. They told me that they can't be that picky, as if I'm being picky. And they may get aggressive with you if you start to explain why and your reason. They offend them or it makes them think that, hey, maybe I shouldn't eat meat and they get offended. Just don't freak out, and I'm not saying that all people that eat meat are like that, so make sure you know why and that you're able and confident enough to talk about it. Now number three, where you can get your protein. So if you're a new vegetarian, you may be like, what the heck, where am I supposed to get protein? Everyone's telling me that I'm not gonna get enough and I just wanna make sure I'm getting enough. You can actually get protein in a lot of easy ways as a vegetarian. Some major ways you can get protein is from beans. Beans have tons of protein in them and they're super easy to make and there's a whole bunch of different kinds so you can't really get tired of it that easily. Nuts, legumes, broccoli, quinoa, and some grains, and eggs. If you are a vegetarian that eats eggs, eggs are a big way you can get protein. There's such an easy way to get protein as well because they're just packed with all sorts of protein and other nutrients that you'll need that you won't get from meat. Tofu and soy are other ways you can get protein as well, um, which are the vegetarian substitutes for meat, which I'll get into some of those a little bit later. Number four, where you can get iron. Because as a vegetarian, you do need to make sure you're getting the vitamins that you need so that you don't become vitamin deficient in certain things and that can cause detrimental things to your health. So some things that you can get iron from besides supplements, if you don't really want to take pills or you're not really a supplement kind of person, you can get iron from legumes, dark leafy vegetables, eggs, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, and things like that because the iron that is in meat is hem, and I'll put it on the screen because I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, hem iron, which your body can absorb, but the all the other things that you eat as a vegetarian, that has non-hem iron in it, like vegetables and fruit and stuff, that has non-hem iron in it, so which your body can't absorb. So ways that you can get iron are from the, the foods that I just listed. Five, where can you get omega-3? Um, omega-3 is a vitamin that you get from eating fish and other seafood like that. There are not as many options to get omega-3s as there are for other vitamins because if you're taking fish oil, you're pretty much consuming fish. So for vegetarians who don't want to consume fish, you can eat things like chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp, which is also protein. Hemp protein also has omega-3 in it. And soy as well has omega-3. Not as much as some of the other things I listed, but it has a little bit. Six, okay, now I wanna talk about some things that surprisingly aren't vegetarian that you may not know or may not realize aren't vegetarian. Um, so there have, there have even been some things that I have realized going through 
my vegetarianism journey that I was like, wait, that has gelatin in it. So if you don't know what gelatin is, let me pull up the actual definition for you. Gelatin is a yellowish, odorless, and nearly tasteless substance that is made by prolonged boiling of skin, cartilage, and bones from animals. And this says we're talking about pork skins, horns, and cattle bones. Does not sound very vegetarian friendly. So surprisingly, some things that have gelatin in them that you may not know are jellos, jellies, jams, gummies. A lot of the chewy things you come to just as a set like a second nature to be like, oh, is there gelatin in that? It's a chewy texture. Gummies, things like that. Um, some other things that have gelatin in them are marshmallows. So you can find some brands that don't, like Marshmallow Fluff. I can put a picture of that brand right here. That does not have gelatin in it, but a lot of just regular marshmallows do. So if you don't want to eat gelatin, I would stray away from things like that. Surprisingly, some mousse, mousses, mousse have gelatin in it as well to give it that different consistency. Some yogurt does apparently as well. So a big thing that you come to um, start doing as a vegetarian is you look at the ingredients on any new things that you're eating or even some of the old things you used to eat when you ate meat just to make sure that you're not still consuming that stuff. And even if you are, it's okay because we're not all perfect, not all vegetarians, vegans, anybody, we're not gonna be perfect. We're gonna mess up sometimes, we're gonna accidentally eat something that has meat in it. It's bound to happen, so don't beat yourself up over it because you think other people are gonna be disappointed or hate on you for it. You might beat yourself up over it because you like ate an animal and like that goes against something that you believe. If you're vegetarian for the animals, not saying that you are, um, but just don't beat yourself up over it because it's gonna happen, it's bound to happen, and it's okay. And one thing that many, many, many people don't know is that Caesar dressing that you put on salads has anchovies in it. So Caesar salad dressing is not vegetarian. Try if you don't eat gelatin or fish, stay away from all those things that I did mention. Number seven, don't go crazy on fake meat, okay? Fake meat is the um, substitute for real meat for vegetarians, tofu, soy. Um, the brands that I like to use are Morningstar and another one that I can't remember, but I'll put it on the screen if I can. Um, I eat those, I, eat, I like their fake meat, I like their black bean burgers, stuff like that. Some of their fake meat parts are more processed and less nutritious than other vegetarian options that you could be having, such as beans, vegetables, things like that. Not saying to cut it out completely, just there are a lot more nutritious things that you could be eating as a vegetarian other than fake meat. But fake meat is always an option, just don't go crazy. <laughs> okay, number eight, some facts about soy. Because soy has been a very controversial thing for me for a long time, because I've heard very different things. I've heard that soy is really, really good for you and you should be eating it a lot as a vegetarian, but I've also heard that it's really bad for you if you eat a lot. I've done some research and what I have found is that it, has, it does nothing but good things for you in moderation. Everything is good in moderation. As long as you're not excessively eating it, you're gonna be fine. It is something that is called a complete protein, which means it has all the essential amino acids you need, which is the starting point of a protein. So soy is great for you, and it is very nutritious and is very good for your body in moderation. As long as you're not eating it three times a day, every single meal, you know, it's you're gonna be okay. If you're eating it excessively, you can in the in later in life have fertility issues or reproduct or problems in your reproductive development. So if you are younger and you're still growing, don't go crazy. Even when you're an adult, don't go crazy on soy because it can have some um, down, uh, downsides on your health if you eat it excessively. But it's really, really good for you otherwise. Just don't eat it excessively. So just don't go crazy on the soy, okay? Don't go crazy on fake meat. Don't go crazy on soy. Okay, this next one is a lot more positive. <laughs> Number nine. What being vegetarian can help in the long run with your health. Being vegetarian has always been considered um, a health lifestyle to be healthier because of the things that meat can do to your cholesterol, to your blood sugar, to your, um, to your heart, um, stuff like that. 
And so things that vegetarian diets can help if you're eating the correct way can help lower risks of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and even certain cancers like prostate or colon cancer. Being vegetarian can help lower the risks of all of that. Obviously, if you're going along with a healthy vegetarian diet. And number 10, the last and final thing I have for you is being vegetarian can help reduce your carbon footprint. Maybe you didn't become vegetarian because of lowering your carbon footprint, but maybe you did. But either way, you're helping to lower your carbon footprint and helping the environment. For example, the Amazon rainforest is on fire right now, currently, to make more space for cattle ranches and animal production. The Amazon rainforest is also 20% of our oxygen levels. Being vegetarian can help reduce all that. Being vegetarian reduces the amount of a lot of things used, water, animals, tree, you know, it helps with so many things. You are lowering your carbon footprint by a lot by being vegetarian. So go you, good job. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it, I'm a vegetarian and I love talking about vegetarian things. Um, I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you did, I'm so glad and I hope you will be able to use some of these tips in the future and throughout your vegetarian lifestyle. I hope you have a wonderful journey through this lifestyle of yours. And if you are new and you did like this video, I would love if you checked out some of my other videos. I have some cooking videos. I have some fashion videos. I have some vlogs. I have all sorts of really good things that you should check out. So you should do that. And if you are new and you did enjoy this video as well, you should subscribe. I would appreciate it a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Peace out.